Coming up today, episode 219 of Who's a Bit Heroes, we take a 1 0 lead into the second leg at home of our first knockout round tight in this last Champions League campaign against Pili Saint Germain. If we can get through that, we will have the draws for the quarter final and the semi final, and also we'll check in on HK and Phil here in the second knockout round of the Conference League. That is all coming up off the back of the intro. Two Who's a Big Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well. And if you are looking forward to today's episode, which could potentially be the last one of the series, hopefully not though, with that 1 0 lead that we did build up in yesterday's episode. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to that one over in the top right corner. But if you are looking forward to today, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, then also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but we haven't gone forward too far off the back of where we did leave things at the end of the last episode when updating you guys on the full first league results in this first knockout round of the Champions League. And we are on the first match day for the second leg of these ties as well. So nothing's happened at all since we did leave things in yesterday's episode. Police St. Germain come into the second leg with a few suspension issues. Abdel was on a red card, as is Moagabai. That was the one, of course, that he did pick up late in that game against us yesterday, which did help us pick up a 1-0 win there at the Milizio Pochettino Stadium. But apart from that, PSG come into this in very, very similar circumstances to what they did for that first leg in yesterday's episode. In terms of us, we have exactly the same squad available for us as well. Hopefully we can pick up a win here at home to go alongside our win away in yesterday's episode. We're going to get straight into the action today. We'll come back shortly from my arena and hopefully finish off the job against PSG. Otherwise, it might be save over. And here are the team sheets for the second leg. As mentioned before, we have exactly the same squad as we did for that first leg in yesterday's episode, of course. We did pick up a 1-0 win there are pretty St. Germain today in the black. It looks like a few changes, obviously, at the back with those suspensions. But apart from that, very similar team to what we did beat yesterday. And hopefully, we can finish off the job here and make our way through to the quarterfinals yet again. And just shy of the 15-minute mark, our first highlight of this one, a free kick. Benvenu Bay gets on the end of that. It comes off the post, so a big early chance for us there off the back of a little bit of early dominance. But unfortunately, can't put that in the back of the net. Still nil all on the day and 1-0 on aggregate. And just shy of 30 minutes through this one now, we are back down their end here for a corner, which Elaine Basicki gets his head on the end of, and this time we put the ball in the back of the net, and there is a good start for us so far in the opening stages of this second leg, and that is our cushion goal already off the back of that 1-0 win in yesterday's episode. No idea there what the PSG goalkeeper is trying to do, making a save there, but Basicki puts that in the back of the net and makes it 2-0 on aggregate. 30 minutes into the second leg. And not too long off the back of that opening goal in the second leg. We start things off again here with a goal kick to Police St. Germain, but we do get the ball back there. I believe that was through Elaine Basicki and Bassero Gay there pings that one out to Jonathan Berger. Another goal here would put us in a very strong position to be seeing out this lead that we have built up both yesterday and in the early stages of today's episode. Carl Volan hoops that deep. Lapasse flicks that one for Adam Saki. Tries to put that top right corner. That's a pretty good save there, though, from Sharif and goal for PSG to keep them somewhat in the hunt still here. The subsequent corner, not much comes from it. We'll see if Dumbier can do anything as he does still keep the ball. He puts that one sort of in the mixer. Lapisse, though, does miss out on position. It gets cleared for a corner, and that will not do it for this highlight. Still going to get shown the subsequent corner, which Lasana Dumbia does put into the mixer. But Siki heads that one back. For Bassero Gay, but then plays a poor pass out to Lasana Dumbia, who was offside. So that's a long highlight, but unfortunately, we can't add to our score, albeit we are now down the other end here for a PSG highlight potentially, but good side tackle there from Elaine Basicki, albeit then Lapisse does miss out on position somehow. That ball finds Mikel Marker. He puts that away in the bottom right corner. It's a bit of a sloppy goal for us there 
Two concede and PSG right back in this tie. One all on the day. 2-1 on aggregate. Some great work there from Basicki to get the ball. But then Lapisse gives it away. And I'm trying to figure out who that is there who could have blocked that past the marker. It's actually our captain, Filippo Denali. So some poor work there from us with 10 minutes to go in the first half. And we are back to a one goal differential. 2-1 just shy of halftime on aggregate. And that is half time in the second league. We go into the sheds locked up at one all, which does feel a little bit harsh, albeit we kind of did gift them the goal that they did score. Unfortunately, the only shot so far on target. Apart from that, we have been very, very dominant so far here at home. So encouraging signs, albeit it's not going to mean much if we don't put them away here in the second half. But thankfully, because yesterday we do still have a one goal advantage, I don't think we need any changes just yet. And we'll get the second half underway with a 2 1 aggregate lead. And we've just gone past the hour mark. We're going to make our first substitution here. Adam Sucky has picked up a little niggly orange injury. I don't think we need to risk things here, even though we are only up by one goal. Very able backup these days in Ori Poor House on, so he can come on all these last 30 or so minutes. Still 2 1 up on aggregate. And only a few minutes off the back of that first substitution, we are going to make another one now. Jonathan Berger really struggling out there on a 6.3. Allegard can come on for him, and Rodinko Crollo will switch out to left back all the latter stages of the second league. And we have entered the last 15 minutes of this time. We do have a corner here, which Dumbia puts towards the near post there for Elaine Basicki looking for a double, but heads that one over the bar. And we still hold a 2-1 lead here on aggregate one all on the day. And we're about to enter the last five minutes of this game. We're going to make our last substitution. Now we've got a few players on red hearts, but Agustin Agatigare not performing that well on a 6.5. So Malizio Menga can come on for him, hopefully. Provides a little bit of late magic like he has done in the past in some of these European games. And with about five minutes left just over, we do still hold a 2-1 lead on aggregate. And almost immediately off the back of that last substitution, we do have a throw in here for PSG. If they get a goal here, this game could go to extra time. A nice ball over there for Marker, but thankfully, just a little bit too much on that. And it is a little bit squeaky bum time here. This would be a bad result, of course, if we did throw this away. And that's not even considering the fact that it would actually be series over. But thankfully, it does look like here we are starting to get on the front foot. Nice ball there for poor house on. Tries to take it around the goalkeeper. He does. Christopher Allegard with the assist from right back. And that will wrap things up. There is going to be at least one more day of Husevic Heroes because we should now be making our way through to the quarterfinals. Poor house on there and a ton of space and too much pace for the PSG defenders goalkeeper caught somewhat there in no man's land and tucks that away in the bottom left corner. And that should do it here as we are now 3-1 up as we are about to enter injury time in this game. There are five minutes of added time overall. Quite a good performance. We've certainly been the better team. It's just taken us quite a while to show it on the scoreboard. But we get through those five minutes with no harm at all. And we go through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League to try and win it for a fifth time overall and a third straight season. That is off the back of a 3-1 aggregate win there over PSG, 1-0 in Paris, and 2-1 here in Husevic. As I said, pretty good performance, just let them have that goal late in the first half. But apart from that, pretty happy with how that game went. And that does mean, of course, we will have a quarterfinal and semifinal draw coming up shortly here in today's video. However, that result has been dampened a little bit by this news. I thought that injury to Adam Saki was quite a minor one. Only being orange, it turns out he has a calf strain. We're going to send him to the physio. He'll be out for four to five weeks. So that probably means he's going to miss that quarterfinal coming up, depending on exactly where that does fall. This might be one of the advantages of playing on that first match day in this first knockout round this time around compared to the second half of the draw like we have had over the last few years. We do have a very able backup just for him there in Oripoor House on, and we can also play Agustin Agatigre up front and start someone like Maurizio Menga as well. So we still do have options, albeit we are potentially going to be missing our star striker for that quarterfinal coming up in tomorrow's episode. But we do make our way through there off the back of that 3-1 aggregate win over Pali Saint-Germain. And we have gone for a week or so off the back of that win against PSG in the second league. And we are about to take part in the draws for both the quarterfinal and the semifinal. Hopefully reveal our path through to the final of this last Champions League season of the save, at least in charge for me, here in 2040 in-game. But before then, we need to cover off the results from the second knockout round of the Conference League. These are results from the first league. As you can see, Phil here 
suffered a 2-1 defeat at home there against Asuka out of Norway. So a little bit of a surprising result there. They considered a late winner. So the defending Conference League champions did have a 2-1 deficit to overcome when they did go to Norway, albeit going down a bit further than the news is a little bit better for HK. They took a 3-2 lead to Turkey as they took on Goz Tepe, albeit we make our way forward a week and see the results from the second legs. HK suffer a 2-0 defeat away from home, and that does mean, unfortunately, HK have been knocked out in that second knockout round. 4-3 on aggregate, but going down a little bit further, Bill here pulled off a comeback, 2-0 there away from home, and they go through 3-2. So HK have been knocked out prior to the quarterfinals. Bill Kia are going to be in the quarterfinals of the Conference League as they look to win that competition for a second season in a row. if we make our way over now to the stages of the competition, you can see they are taking on Krilya Sovetov out of Russia with Bike to Think being the defending champions. That is a tie that Bill Kia can win if they make their way into the final four, as we found out last season. Anything can happen from there, so hopefully Phil Kier are in with a decent chance of picking up that conference league for a second straight season, but a little bit disappointing there that HK could not finish off the job against Gilles Tepe, and they would have been taking on Lille if they had got through that second knockout round. But it is time for us to take part in the quarterfinal draw for this season's Champions League. Before we do get there, just update you guys on the results from the other ties in that first knockout round. Barcelona on the same match day as us, doubled up on the 2-1 wins, and they go through 4-2 over Hertha Berlin. Also on that first match week, it was RB Leipzig finishing off the job against Sporting, and Manchester United as well finishing off the job over Nice. So we were the only top seed on that top half of those draws who did actually win our ties. All three of those other teams did finish second in their groups. Chelsea were the other top seed to go through really comfortably dealing with Inter Milan there, 7-0 on Egypt, 5-0 on the second leg, that included an own goal by one of our former players, and Richard Waspa, who Chelsea did sell to Inter Milan after only one and a bit years. At the club, Juventus go through 5-0 over Real Madrid, a bit of a surprising result there, Man City 4-2 on Egypt over Bayern Munich, and also AC Milan beat Liverpool 3-2 on Egypt, so that means that six of the eight teams going through here to this quarterfinal draw only finished second in their groups. So based on that, hopefully we were in with a pretty good chance here of making it three straight Champions League titles and of course five overall. For this save, it is time for us to get stuck into the quarterfinal draw first things first. First out of the hat are Barcelona. They will be taking on the Juventus team who will be on a high, of course, off the back of that demolition of Real Madrid. Next up, we have Manchester City. Quite a good team, I think it is fair to say. In the save universe, they are taking on RB Leipzig, and that means that we have left Chelsea, Manchester United. We can get those guys. We found that out a few seasons ago, even though they do come out of the same group as us, and also AC Milan next up out of the hat. RAC Milan, they will get Chelsea, and that means that quite fittingly in this final season of Husevic Heroes, yet again, we are taking on Manchester United. Of course, we did beat them technically. 5-2 on Egret during the group stage, 3-0 at home, and then it was 2 all away from home. So based on that, not that long ago, of course, that was just last week. Hopefully, we can repeat the dose, but that is definitely the team we've played the most so far in Europe in this save. So hopefully we can get past them. Otherwise, kind of a fitting farewell, I think it would be, against the team we have played the most, as I said. In this save, but coming up in tomorrow's episode, Bolsonaro versus Manchester United yet again. And that first leg is going to be played at my arena as well. So we do need to start off with a flyer in that tie and hopefully have a good advantage going to Old Trafford for the second leg. And we'll just get the mouse to come on the right screen here and get stuck in to the semi-final draw now. First up it is AC Milan or Chelsea. And we will be taking on the winner of that tie should we get past Manchester United and through to the semi-finals, Chelsea doing extremely well in the Premier League at the moment, as you'll see shortly when we do check out our opposition in tomorrow's episode in Manchester United. So that could be quite a big semi-final potentially if it did end up being Bolsonaro versus Chelsea, albeit a record against Pep Guardiola in this save is quite good, and that means our potential opponent in the final, if we make it that far, will be one of Manchester City or RB Leipzig and Barcelona or Juventus, so that is our path to the final, first off we have to get past Manchester United, 
And off the back of that, if we can get that far, one of AC Milan or Chelsea. But coming up tomorrow yet again, of course, we only played them in the group stages last week. We take on Manchester United. Of course, we're very, very familiar with this club. We have played them a bunch in the save. They currently find themselves second in the Premier League. It doesn't look like much has changed in terms of their squad since we played them in the group stages. They are second on the Premier League table and quite a distance above Manchester City, but also quite a fair way behind Chelsea, who are already 17 points clear with only eight games left in the season. It does look like Chelsea are going to pick up the Premier League title for a second straight season. So hopefully we can get past Manchester United because if we can't beat those guys, our chances of being a team like Chelsea or AC Milan, if they can get past Chelsea, probably not that high. But it will be a tie between the top two favourites for this season's Champions League coming up in tomorrow's episode. We take on Manchester United yet again in the quarterfinals. And also before we do wrap things up for today's episode, a very quick transfer update. We've sold a bunch of players since you were last year. I say a bunch free, and they have all gone to fellow Icelandic clubs, some young talent here at the club who didn't quite have the potential, I felt like, to stay here and prove a difference maker. When we do sim forward a couple of years off the back of this season, so Finson, he's gone to Phil here. He's the midfielder who didn't have that much potential when he was at the club. I think that was hovering around the free mark. We've also got Bob Vuters, a striker out of Belgium, two and a half star potential. He has gone to Nuts KR and also going to Phil here is Zalad de Roxy, who I think we signed off the next gen list last season. He also only had three star white potential when he was at the clubs, just getting a bit of money in for those guys, as I think it might help out Phil here when we do sim forward a couple of seasons in the save come next week. But that will do it for today's episode. We just do enough across both leagues to get past Police Saint Germain, and that does mean we are taking on Manchester United in the quarterfinals in tomorrow's episode. If you did enjoy today's one, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. And until tomorrow, for our quarterfinal of the Champions League against Manchester United, which could potentially be the last episode of this series, then do remember to keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.